right, so I'd like to go ahead and call us to order at exactly two o'clock today on Monday the 14th. Um, first thing, uh, trying to remember the specific wording here, but it's in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. There's a specific amendment, which I don't recall the, which one it is. Do you, um, uh, no. I, there? Uh, I don't, but I, I think that we're good to, we haven't been repeating it every time in the Arts Commission. Okay, <laughs> fine. Uh, <laughs> but in accordance with the Open Meetings Act and the fact that this is being done electronically. Uh, I want everybody that's on the call here for the panelists to go ahead and make sure that you mention where you are uh, as you have to be in the, con well, not in the continental US, but in the United States uh, in order to fully participate. So I am the chair, Alan Kansesau. I am in East Lansing, Michigan, Ingham County. I'm Teresa Dunn. I'm zooming in from Bel Air, Michigan. I'm Julian Van Dyke and I'm zooming in from Lansing, Michigan. Teddy Hughes, Charlotte, Michigan. And Meg Croft, East Lansing, Michigan. All right. So we have quite a few items here on our agenda in the early portion. Uh, so we have a agenda for today. Uh, we're gonna be reviewing very briefly the minutes from the last two meetings, communications from citizens. Uh, we have a not, number of people that are gonna be on here. Um, whatever reports we have, we don't have very many of them, I, I doubt. Uh, and then we have several business items. Uh, we have an item up with a sculpture, downtown murals, uh, sculpture donation. So quite a few things to get through today. Um, does anyone want to move to approve the agenda for today or anything? First of all, anything that you want to add to the agenda? Okay, nobody seems to be- I'll move Oops. to approve the agenda. Okay. I second. second. All right. So let's go ahead and vote in favor of approving. Aye. 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 All right, so we got five ayes, no nays. So we'll go ahead and approve that. Next item is approval of the minutes from the April 5th meeting. I think we didn't have these attached to the last meeting that we had and that's why we weren't able to approve them. If I remember correctly, it wasn't, on that, wasn't attached to the agenda. Um, did everyone get a chance to look through the packet earlier? and review the notes? Any items that you want to have added to it? Any changes to be made? All right, anyone want to move to approve it? I move to approve it. Can I get a second? I second it. All right. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes from April 5th? Aye. 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 Oh, Meg, did you Aye. see? Oh, okay, good. Just making sure. <laughs> right, 5 0, and that is a unanimous one. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from May 17th. And again, anything that anybody wanted to have added or changed to these minutes from the last meeting that we had? Move to approve. I second. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes from May 17th? Aye. 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 All right, 5-0 and unanimous for that approval as well. Uh, reports from the chairperson. Um, I don't really have anything to report at the moment. Obviously we meet as an, on an as needed basis. Uh, I know we'll be discussing uh, the email from Mr. Hunt here shortly. Um, and aside from that, I'm excited that we have a bunch of stuff to look at and review today and to discuss. I know some of the, many of the artists are on here as attendees. Uh, see, looks like there was a hand raised by Peter Dewan. Um, we can, um, when we get to the communicate, when, he's actually a part of the first item on our agenda. So okay. we, can, we can chat with him when it's. Time. We get to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just double checking. 
All right. So I don't really have anything major to report here. Um, going elsewhere on the agenda. Uh, let's see who's the next person that reports. So that would be council liaison, which is going to be uh, Jesse, who is not here yet, correct? Yep, she's not on as of yet. So I'll have to skip past her. Um, anything from any of the other panelists, anything you wanna mention or bring up? I'm gonna go with a no <laughs> and we'll move on. Uh, do we have anything from you, Heather? Uh, just a couple things real quick. Uh, the Dustin Hunt email, we don't have to discuss but because it was written communication. I, I do put it on the agenda, so that's mm -hmm. what it at this time. Um, and then secondly, I think that we'll need to have a July meeting to discuss round two revisions with MDP Okoye, um, but we'll confirm that his contract has not been approved by council yet. So um, I'll know more once it's approved by council and I'll obviously keep you updated and send a doodle poll when I know more. Okay, thank That's you very much. I see Jesse has joined us. Hey guys. Just, just in time for your report to us as our council liaison. Oh gosh, um, what do you want to know? <laughs> I don't know. We don't, it's not like we have like a set report. It's not like I'm I'm doing financial reporting for us here. Yeah. Uh, no. What do you What do you want to talk to us about? If uh, the city will centralize composting. <laughs> composting is it is an ongoing um, issue. We don't have any place to put compost yet. So, um, I mean, I would just continue to push if if you're really um, dedicated to the idea that environmental commission is probably the best place to put your um, your desires because um, they're the ones that are really pushing that policy. So um, I wouldn't say that it's not going to happen, but it's probably not going to happen quickly. I'm into it too because my neighborhood association is judgmental about compost bins because we have a lot of skunks. And so I feel like I can't do it in my yard. So I'd like to have some place to put it. But um, yeah, so ongoing discussion. Um, I think everybody probably knows about the Albert project, the closed down um, block on Albert. Um, seems to be fairly popular. I've heard good comments from different people in different spheres. Um, so that's gonna continue through the end of the month with the possibility of extending it if it seems like it's really um, working out really well. Um, we're actively working with a lot of downtown restaurants to get them to expand their seating out into the right of way. So. Um, obviously we have to maintain ADA access, but within that guidelines, any business that is able to extend their outside seating area, um, our economic development team is working with them, trying to get them situated. Um, if you've been down to the Albert Avenue, you've probably noticed that Barrio has taken advantage of that and they've got an extra row of tables outside now. Um, I think the same is planned for Jolly Pumpkin. I think Lou and Harry's is going to expand as well. Um, uh, Harper's is um, turning their side lot into sort of a beer garden um, seating area. So we've got a lot of downtown restaurants that are really kind of expanding out into the right of way. So that's kind of exciting um, for people who are not super comfortable eating inside again yet. Um, Graduate Hotel is open, including their rooftop restaurant, which I've heard exciting things about. I have not had a chance to check it out yet myself. Um, I think obviously we've got a lot of road work and construction happening. The Glen Karen neighborhood is getting water main upgrades and sewer upgrades. The sewage project, the big sewer um, upgrade on Evergreen is kind of on, it's definitely on the downward side of that project. So hopefully that will start going together fairly soon. Um, I'm not sure the timeline on the Abbott project or the Glen Karen project. Um, the West Glen Karen project extended through the whole summer, but I don't think that this one will take as long because there was like other factors involved with what made that take so long. It wasn't just the work. So hopefully it will not be all summer. 
that it's torn up, but there is a lot of stuff torn up. I wasn't able to get to the post office from any direction the other day to mail something because it was like no streets, no sidewalks. So um, I'll be driving to Okemos to mail a package later today. Um, let's see. I think, I don't know. Those are the things that are top of my mind. I guess the other thing that's top of my mind is tonight we're going to have our first big discussion um, surrounding the recommendations from the Police Oversight Study Committee. So that will be um, an exciting step forward. Um, to That's been a really long process. Um, I think we've been talking about that pretty much my entire term so far, which is about a year and a half now. So um, taking another step forward and creating an actual oversight committee will be a great um, next step in police reform. So that's happening tonight, which is exciting. Um, anything else that is tickling anybody's mind that I can help with? How about art related? Art related downtown, we're doing more placemaking stuff. There's definitely some more art installation projects planned as part of the downtown placemaking. There's a cooperation happening between our DDA and the Kresge Art Museum to get some reproduction art out into the main ways. We've been hosting art from the junior high and high school kids on the kind of mobile art boards underneath the Division Street garage. Um, I think you- and So that's gonna continue the through the Broad Art Museum. What's up? The Broad Art Museum, not the Kresge. No, I think Kresge, it's from the Kresge collection. So it'll be, oh, okay. um, yep, yep, a little bit less modern. Um, I mean, there is definitely modern art in the Kresge collection, but it's a much more, um, chronologically comprehensive collection, I would say, than the road. Um, so I'm excited. I don't know what pieces have been selected. I'm kind of excited to see them come into being. Um, I know that there's still some pop-up stuff um, planned, not like art specifically. I guess it is art. Um, in, the, um, in conjunction with the Albert Avenue closure, they're gonna start doing some open mic night type performances down there um, and possibly some pop-up vendors. Um, so those will be, you know, that'll be kind of an, an opportunity for local artists and performers to perform and sell their work. Um, I'm not sure exactly how comprehensive that plan is. It's something that was kind of just mentioned to me right before Adam left town um, on his much, much earned vacation. So I will follow up with him when he gets back about exactly what the schedule is on that. Um, we've got live performance back at the farmer's market as well. Um, so we are starting to add some of our performance cultural programming back into the schedule. So that's exciting. Um, Heather can probably give a better update about what's happening with the art festival, um, but that has been moved to August. Obviously, I think everybody's gotten that memo by now, um, hoping that we'll have a higher vaccination rate and that we can be a little bit more casual with that when that comes to that time. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, I think that's what I know about art at the moment. That seems pretty comprehensive. So <laughs> along, with, along with the general operation of the city. So yes, yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No worries. So I'm going to pop in and out. My kids are getting their hair cut. And so I'm like in the back <laughs> and I have to go check on them occasionally and make sure that they don't get like, um, you know, Mohawks or something. Although who cares? Actually, they can have Mohawks if they want. I was going to say, a U of O people should not right. be one that's Seriously. going to be preventing your children from getting a mohawk. You should be preventing yeah. them from getting some sort of extremely boring haircut. <laughs> right. <You should> be <laughs> encouraging them to get like a high fade or something. <laughs> well, Ash is rocking a pretty awesome mullet right now, so. <laughs> I approve. Happy stuff. birthday season. <laughs> All right. So communications from citizens. Um. I guess uh, my, my main question for, to Heather is gonna be, how will this differ from the written communication section? Is this the people that are on the call right now? Yes, the people okay. who are on the call right now. And I, right. Uh, Justin, did you confirm that everyone is here for the first item on the agenda? Uh, no, not yet. So what I need to do is go through the list and if I could just have people, uh, everybody that's on the call just briefly identify if you are here for a specific agenda item or if there is public comment that you would like to offer at this time. Um, so I will just go through the list uh, to make sure that we confirm 
what, what everybody is here for. So the first person is Benjamin Duke. I'm here for the first agenda item. Thanks so much. And then Hannah Mackey. It should be noted that the first agenda item is the groovy opportunity, the the mural over at the parking garage, just in case anyone was confused. Yes. Hannah, if you're there, could you just confirm if you're here for public comment, just watching or participating in a specific agenda item? Okay, we'll come back. Uh, Joan. Hey there, I am also here for the groovy mural first agenda item. Thank you. And Keel Darling. I am here for the groovy opportunity agenda item. Thank you. Luke Hackney. Uh, groovy opportunity item. And then we've got May. I'm also here for the groovy opportunity. Okay. And Peter Dewan. I'm sorry, I was muted. I'm also here for the first agenda item, the Groovy Opportunity Mural. And thank you for having us. All right, thank you so much. All right. So and Hannah Mackey, did you oh, want, could you confirm if you're here for the uh, agenda item? Yes, uh, I'm here for the Groovy Opportunity. Sorry, I stepped out for a second. No worries, thanks so much. Okay, that's the full list. So everybody's here for the first agenda item. Okay. Um, I actually do want to discuss Dustin's email, but perhaps we should do the business items first and come back to that later. How does everyone feel about that? Okay, see a lot of thumbs up and general approving faces and such. So our first item on the agenda today is going to be Groovy Opportunity second installation. So this is the expansion of the mural that has been going on over at the Division Street Parking Garage. And Heather, if you want to uh, screen share that portion or Justin, whomever it is that specifically does that. So we're being asked to review and approve the attached art. Uh, it is I as- make a request? I'm sure. sorry. If, if the screen, if it can be um, zoomed in just a little bit, I have issues with the small text. If you need any larger, just let me know too. Yeah. Or Heather, let is Heather know. I don't really have any control over it, but Heather, I can bark out demands. Or something else. Okay. Yep, this, I believe this is the image that they're proposing mm -hmm. today. Uh, the rest is artist introductions and a little bit about the process. So I think leaving it right here is going to be great for now. Thank you, Justin. So this is a continuation of the project that began last year. Um, actually, I believe it was, it was two years ago, actually, at the start. It was 2019, yes. So uh, obviously, this is a sort of collaboration between MSU's art school and the city of East Lansing. Uh, and this has been something that I know uh, Dr. Duke has been involved in uh, and, and been pushing along. I could speak more, but I know that we have all these people on <laughs> specifically to discuss this mural. So I feel like it would be best to turn over to the students and Dr. Duke about the mural and uh, probably go from there because I know they all wanted to introduce themselves and 
and discuss the piece. So Justin, I can't uh, promote anybody with the screen share though. You, thank you. <laughs> All right, I am going to um, promote to panelists, Ben Duke. And then um, I believe Hannah, Joan, Keel, and May are artists that are on. Is that right, Ben? Yeah. Okay, I'll promote all of them as well. And then once you've done your presentation, I'll promote the DDA so that they can um, share what they have to say as well. All right, I think I got everybody. You can take it away. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, I mean, first, I just want to say uh, thank you to Heather for uh, being our contact on this. And um, over, you know, with the, the DDA, I want to thank uh, Peter and Heather Pope, who has also been working pretty closely on this project over the years. I did want to make sure I mentioned that I'm I'm um, an art teacher, so I'm not a doctor. I'm just an MFA, and uh, uh, you can just call me Professor Duke or Ben Duke. Either one is fine. So I to start off, I want to move it quickly just over to um, all of the participating artists, and uh, the full list is Candice Chauvinek, Hannah Mackey, Joan Bambury, Catherine Resigu, Kyle Darling. May King Siri and myself. And uh, this year um, we opened up the uh, kind of call within the department to all of the graduate students and then to students who had taken the mural class with me. Um, uh, so it was undergraduates who had worked with me before, graduate students, and then also um, alumni, recent alumni. And uh, the people who joined were the people who volunteered. And of course, I did a lot of uh, uh, trying to recruit as many as possible. And I just wanna thank the artists for uh, giving their work to uh, the project and then by extension to the city. I did wanna read one little inspiring note, inspiring to me, of course, and hopefully maybe you guys can find some points of reference in it as well. It's from this book called, Are We Human? Um, notes on an archaeology of design. I'm just going to read one, one short paragraph, if you would be so kind. Humans have always been radically reshaped by the designs they produce, and the world of design keeps expanding. We live in a time when everything is designed, from our carefully crafted individual looks and online identities, to the surrounding galaxies of personal devices, new materials, interfaces, networks, systems, infrastructures, data, chemicals, organisms, and genetic codes. The average day involves an experience of thousands of layers of design that reach deep into the ground and outer space, but also deep into our bodies and our brains. We literally live inside design, like a spider lives inside the web constructed from inside its own body, but unlike the spider, we have spawned countless overlapping and interacting webs. Even the planet itself has been completely encrusted by design as a geological layer. There is no longer an outside the world of design. Design has become the world. You know, this to me, first of all, I read it and I, I uh, uh, feel thunder. <laughs> it just like strikes right at the core of my experience of myself in the world. And the way that it relates to our, our project is our project is a, a really one about redesigning a public space and the way in which we can collectively uh, work as a team and bring a kind of collective statement to that larger public, which of course is the people on the art selection panel, but then our uh, uh, community at the university, 
in the city, and then just the, the people who travel through and, and uh, happen upon it and discover it uh, uh, years from now, hopefully. It's covered from the rain, so it's going to last a long time. So um, to, that, to that end, I also wanted to introduce the way that we started to just contemplate how we could work together to create the design that we came up with. And we kind of circled around this sentence um, because of the disruptive year you know, that we've all experienced. What is a moment from this past year that you will always remember? And I will let um, the artists in their introductions uh, describe more about their contributions to our design. And uh, if there's any questions for me, then we can circle around back to those at that time. So thank you very much for your time and attention. And I'll pass, I'll just say, I'll pass it off to um, uh, Hannah because she's uh, the first person's name I saw. <laughs> Hannah. All right, hi. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, hi, uh, I'm Hannah. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a, a video today, but uh, um, I'm a, a third year MFA candidate. Um, really, really excited to be a part of this. Um, this is gonna be, you know, the first uh, mural or really painting project of any kind that I'm involved in. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really sort of following the lead, of course, of, of Ben and, and of everyone else here who has a lot more, um, you know, uh, <laughs> experience with this kind of thing than I do. Um, my main uh, contribution to the design here were the, the fish, uh, different species of tuna. Um, and, uh, you know, Joan has really, I think, done a great job of, of um, you know, sort of making it feel like, you know, those along with, you know, um, everyone else's contributions, you know, really sort of flows through the design. Um, and um, I don't know, just it feels very dynamic um, and uh, um, really wonderful to me. And I think it's a really great continuation of, of um, you know, of course, what uh, Ben and, and everyone else who worked on the, the project two years ago has done. Um, and I think, you know, we'll hopefully lead the way for something um, more, maybe a third year and, and so on and so forth, um, you know, as the, as the wall continues to be painted. Um, yeah, I, I think that's uh, all I have to say. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Hannah, do you want to pass it off to someone? Just choose someone. Yeah, yeah, um, I'll pass it on to Joan. Hey, so my contribution was the little itty bitty weird guys in the bottom that kind of look like animation frames as well as the larger box creature towards the middle and the bits of the fish towards the lower right. But I also put together the composition as a whole using everyone's images and combining it as well as a lot of the color palette I had a handle on. And most of that came from this obsession with the colors of East Lansing, from the people to what we choose to wear, to our businesses. We are so colorful and it's just so beautiful. And I really wanted to bring that level of dynamic difference and brightness and just honestly hope through color and shape into the mural while combining everyone's work in the most respectful way possible so that everyone feels like they have a voice on the wall and all the different people walking by for years to come, no matter what state they're in, can be able to look at the wall and see something that they personally really identify with. And I, if that's cool, I can pass it off to May. Hi, uh, my contribution to the piece um, for the composition are the poem in the bottom and the patterns that are scattered all over. Um, I'm originally from Thailand. Um, this is my fifth year or yeah, fifth year here at, at MSU. Um, and uh, so I wanted to bring my culture into this piece um, in hopes to, uh, to be more inclusive of um, people from all walks of, uh, all walks of life and, and um, students from all over the world that are at MSU um, and hopefully coming back into town and um, being on campus again in the fall. Uh, can I pass it on to Kyle? 
Yes, hello. I'm Kyle Darling. I am uh, an alumni of MSU. I, I did my MFA in painting, had the opportunity to teach uh, some foundations courses, and uh, I was involved. I participated in the first installment, which was a lot of fun, so I'm excited to be back. Um, my contribution isn't actually clear in the image we're looking at, but I can screen share. I uh, took on the challenge of the ceiling, which we've uh, wanted to do. And there. A little zoomed in. So I decided to, I had some uh, line work and cloud imagery and I just visited the Dale Chihuly garden. So I was really inspired by those forms. Um, and yeah, again, I was going for a, a kind of boiling over continuation of the composition, emphasizing the playful, um, kind of graphic cartoony qualities of the mural that I uh, thought would be uh, fun to tackle on the ceiling. So um, that was a challenge, uh, just the way the wall photographs. So um, I hope, I hope this is, I'm not implying or uh, making you jump too much to see what uh, that will look like. So oh, yeah, that's the continuation. Um, I don't know who else to pass to. Um. So there was another name, Luke, and I think maybe Luke was with Catherine maybe? So I, that was someone I didn't recognize. So I guess uh, that's us and uh, who were able to make it today. And um, if there's any questions, we would be happy to respond. So let me, um, let me promote Luke and Peter. They're both with the DDA and see, we'll let them um, join us for question time before the art selection panel kind of, uh, goes away to deliberate, <laughs> I don't know, to offer their comments. Uh, so let me promote you guys. Obviously they're not going anywhere. We're right here the whole day. <laughs> All right. Um, I think, did I? There you are, Peter. Okay, Luke and Peter, you're both here if you, um, wanted to say anything about the DDA's role in this or um, just have any questions for the artist artists mm -hmm. as well. Thank you. Um, thanks for letting me participate today. <clears throat> I'd like to um, maybe just provide a little bit of context uh, about how this program came together. And uh, it's been one of the great um, initiatives I think we've undertaken in the downtown over the span of the last several years. And I'd like to give a shout out to um, Julian Van Dyke uh, for your great contributions in the Artist Alley. Well, thank you very much. Um, I know you have the uh, So You Think You Can Color book, uh, which I have not read, but I hope I can color. Uh, you got it. I'll give you one. Okay. A, a number of years ago, we had a conversation at the DDA level on how to continue to activate and create placemaking opportunities in our downtown. And we had this beautiful mural that had been created by Julian, which uh, I think any East Lansing resident is quite proud to bring visitors into our downtown and walk by and see all these creative spaces we have in artist alleys. And 
I, uh, a number of years ago, had interaction with a number of emerging artists through the university. And so we had conversations about how do we activate uh, downtown spaces and how do we bridge the gap between town and the university? And I made the suggestion that we have a whole art department across the street of a number of emerging artists that we could perhaps develop some type of cooperative, collaborative working relationship. And Professor Duke uh, and Heather Pope and myself had a number of conversations about how it could be tied to a certain curriculum with the university. And so this program has evolved over a period of time. The DDA made a commitment to fund uh, over a span of five to six years each year, the, con the continuation of this mural. And uh, quite truthfully, it has turned out much greater and better than I originally envisioned. And I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, this adds to all the additional things that the DDA is presently working with the university on from, as uh, council member Greg indicated, we will have renderings of artwork that is presently in the Kresge Art Collection displayed on public parking garages throughout the downtown. We are working collaboratively with the MSU Theater Department about having the possibility of pop-up community performances. I'd love to see the, the uh, uh, summer theater performances that have been enjoyed for years over on campus. Re relocated perhaps a performance or two in the downtown. We will have live musicians. And so all of these things that we're doing really further defines our community as the city of the arts. Uh, we are going to be having feasibility studies that will begin, and we've actually had our first meeting with ArtSpace, who is a developer of housing for artists with the possibility of having studio art space where the community can enjoy um, uh, you know, different types of art, either whether it's performance art or artistic art. Um, and yet we can provide, find a new way to provide a different housing stock in our community. So all of these initiatives are somewhat parallel one another. And I'm thrilled that the Groovy Art Mural was part of the original conception of how we really transform our community into a dynamic and vibrant place. So um, that's my two cents. I'm thrilled to observe and listen and be part of the conversation today. And I think you're all doing great work. I wanna compliment um, all of the artists that have participated in this process. Um, I never really wanted us to be in a position where we were critiquing their creative expression but nonetheless, I'm thrilled with what they produced. What I really am most enjoying about all of this is 20 years from now or 30 years from now, all these individual artists can come back and observe what their creation was in this mural and have a sense of ownership and a sense of belonging to our community. And I think that's really how you identify and develop placemaking. So, uh, my hats off to everyone. Thanks for letting me be part of the conversation today. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the compliments too. <laughs> All right. So at this point then, um, anything else from any of the other panelists that we wanna mention or any discussion or items that they wanna bring up? I have a question about the human figure in the mural. Um, if they want to talk about that. So that's my contribution. So I guess I'll talk about it. And uh, I'm not sure, I mean, uh, I'm not sure what what's your question? <laughs> I don't know. I want to uh, make sure I'm answering the question that's being asked. I'm not sure what the question is. I guess the inspiration or the, when I look at it, what am I going to, what do we want observers to know or see? What are we expressing there? What is that human figure about? 
I guess. Okay. So uh, in, in, in my work, I think a lot about uh, the figure as there's kind of a principle of complementarity that exists inside my own work. And I try and express it in, in uh, different kinds of ways. But the notion is that there's like multiple things happening and multiple truths happening all at one time. So in, in this sense, this figure for me, I mean, it's, there's an incidental aspect of it where it's coming from you know, my own process and journey as a maker. So uh, uh, the person who's represented is a model that I've worked with for many years, but now she moved away. And uh, I was uh, over the pandemic times, I've been working through like old photographs and old drawings um, <clears throat> since I wasn't having people over to the studio. So, I mean, that's an incidental kind of thing. But then those, those uh, drawings and images get transformed and uh, I'll, you know, redraw an arm. And uh, in terms of the kind of metaphorical presence that I feel with this figure, or my intention behind it, is she's kind of in an off-balanced space, holding a book and balancing a cup of coffee on her elbow, and has a kind of inquisitive kind of look. So for me, and um, there's a principle of complementarity in viewing as well as in making. So it's not that I'm saying that uh, a viewer would, would necessarily take that thing directly, but I'm trying to create a kind of a feeling, you know, with that. So an inquisitive, uh, a balancing act is kind of taking place, uh, inquisitive in the sense of engaging in um, uh, the written word. So what do you think? What's your take? <laughs> I agree completely. Let's basically what you're saying is completely what I'm getting. And I just wanted a little more context to be sure that I'm not missing something or there's not some significance beyond what I can just tell from myself. You know what I'm saying? From my own experience there, it sounds like this is a model you've worked with. So there isn't any significance that I'm missing. The, the, the literature and the inquisitiveness that's there for sure. And I love the coffee cup, of course. <laughs> I wanted to, um, I, first a comment and then ex extend a uh, couple questions. And the first thing I wanna say is I'm so pleased to see the uh, student and alum um, participants, the people all I know and will make wonderful contributions. And I really appreciate what each of you um, said about your contributions and uh, its uh, place in this project. And I'm so excited to see this be realized. And um, both what you offer as individuals to leave a mark in our community, but then what you take away from the project um, under uh, Ben's leadership and the the reading that, that Ben offered, I thought was really beautiful. and. Um, left a, a wonderful umbrella over um, the, the sentiments of this going forward. So I think it is reciprocal as Peter mentioned and I also appreciate Peter's comments. I'm wondering if there are any um, details and, and this, I guess there's a, a question that's kind of going down the route Teda was asking, um, not two questions. Is there anything that you um, are going to write on the book or the page is blank and the, that the viewer kind of imagines what's written on them or, and what is the blue um, text uh, right next to the figure underneath the fish? I can't, I can't quite make out what that is. Uh, I'll, I'll start. Um, I intend it to be blank, but it folds right into your next question, which is May's poem and May. Hello, that is my poem. Yeah, oh, um, sorry, I missed that. Sorry, May. Um, is there any way to, to is there a, zoo, uh, a detail shot of that? I'd love to see that closer. Uh, I can share a screen of the poem itself. We actually changed the poem that we um, put on there. That's actually not the right one. Um, so I can share my screen of what, like which one we're actually gonna use. Um, this is the original one, so it's not going to look exactly like this when we put it on. It's going to be the same color scheme that um, Joan put into the composition, but it'll be this um, poem instead. So 
So it says, uh, lazy river flowing westward, uh, slow and steady like my mind on a misty morning, rising with the rain, falling with the sun, separating past from present, adored by visitors yet harmed by residents, fed by anger and young reckless stupidity, flowing slow and steady like my mind on a misty morning. And I wrote that poem actually for a type class with uh, Kelly Salko, um, but um, it's about the Red Cedar River, which my apartment is right by it. So I wrote that. That's beautiful, May. Thank you for sharing. And, and I, I like the way that the, the text kind of spills down. And I'm, I'm assuming you're going to also paint like the, there's the gray and the red, and that will become a very visual part of the mural. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, so it'll, it'll be the same color scheme as what, uh, what Joan already put into the composition. Thank you. Uh, if I may, I uh, just add, I believe uh, Luke Hackney is also on this call. Uh, Luke is with the DDA, and I don't know if Luke wanted to offer some comments. Um, yeah, hi, Peter. No, I, uh, I agreed with everything you said, um, and definitely don't feel like uh, you and I are necessarily in a position to, to want to critique or, or offer suggestions on changing the art. I feel like the artists are are doing their job and we should let them do their job. So I agree with you on that point too. Um, but thanks for having me. It's, it's great to check in on this. It's great to, you know, spend money and, and see something like this happen. It's encouraging. Um, I guess while I am here, I would, I would just uh, use this opportunity to say that we should uh, keep trying to support local artists, that we should keep trying to, to, to keep these things local. I know that uh, I just feel like a lot of uh, art in the community is not necessarily local and a lot of times when it is that that the artists are are definitely undervalued and underfunded compared to to art that is come coming from uh, outside sources i have a question for hannah hannah could you speak a little bit to the um why you chose um tuna for the mural yeah. Um, well, to be honest, I, there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, <laughs> you know, like, um, I don't know, I guess relevance to the, the tuna in particular. I did like the, the fact that each one could be a sort of a, a separate subspecies. So they're all a little bit different. Like you've got yellow fin and big eye and um, a skipjack in there. And then the, the other three are different ones as well. Um, and uh, yeah, specifically the tuna, um, there wasn't, uh, yeah, sort of a reason behind that, but um, yeah, they are all sort of uh, different. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, anything else from any of the other members of the committee? I'm going to take that as a no as well. So going along with this, uh, I believe that we are to sort of convene and discuss approval of the project. Is that correct, Heather? Uh, so the, the project is already approved because oh, already approved. Okay. is funding it. Um, okay. Today is your opportunity to offer any feedback on the design, um, ask any questions that you have uh, and kind of sign off on the project, but there's no formal motion necessary. And um, I, if, if you do have feedback, obviously the artists are here today and they can hear it, but I will also be uh, taking notes and sending that to Ben uh, later on this week. So it's all in one comprehensive email. Got you, okay. Just want to make sure exactly what our our course of action was on this. Anything then from any of the other members of the committee? Does not appear to be. Um, so effectively, I guess we're, we're signing off on it even though there's not a formal vote. Um, and I wanna thank everybody for, for coming up today uh, virtually and discussing the piece with us. Uh, very much appreciate that. and giving us that opportunity to review it. 
Um, I'll be very excited to see the end result, I believe. Ben, I'll still follow up with you later this week <laughs> to talk about next steps and connect other Pope. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the downtown mural, which we have had our last couple of meetings uh, centered around. So if we can go ahead and put that up on the screen for sharing. And also, do we have, were there, I guess I should have asked uh, about this for the agenda earlier. Did we have um, the previous version of this just to see if there were any differences that had been any changes that were made from the original version to the one that was attached to this? Uh, so no changes have been made yet. Okay, I got you. I, I was just wondering if that already taken place based on the commissioners. No, so the, the contract needs to be approved by council before NWBC can go or is comfortable, honestly, moving forward with any changes. Mm -hmm. So I, organize the ones from the Arts Commission here, as well as the one that I heard you say in the last meeting. Um, and you, so this is your, and, and once the contract is, uh, is approved, then I will share all of these comprehensively again with NUBC and, and we'll move forward with re revision round one. Mm -hmm. um, can, we, can we increase the size of the text, please? So you get to say yes or no to the Arts Commission's ideas, recommendations, um, and interpret them as you will. And then also um, maybe clarify the one that you had and then add any others that you may have as well. So. I do like uh, number three. I think I mentioned that during the original, or not the original, but the the last vote that we had related to this. Um, I don't know if I feel as strongly about number two as some other people do. Um, simply, I feel like it almost makes it uh, less interpretive for viewers. It almost makes it. I would say too obvious, but. Um, well, and to I, that point, I wonder if that could be solved not in the image, but through the interaction, like with QR co codes, that deeper history is revealed through that interaction. Yeah, that's that's a good point, and I think that that could be done um, quite easily. I, I I feel like that's a, a good middle ground, just because I. I don't want to get into a point where this just becomes, you know, paint by numbers of three different activities kind of thing, or, you know, whatever they do deem as, as being most relevant to put on the wall. Um, I like to have a little bit more creative process for the creators than that. Um, and I, I like the piece as is also. So I don't necessarily have any great desire to make, you know, whole scale changes to it to make it more sort of East Lansing centric. Um, in East Lansing. Yeah, I mean, it's in East Lansing for starters. Number two, it's really about Dr. Green. Right, right. So yeah, how do we make this more about ourselves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting responsibility we have, right? Because like even in the last mural even though they're not seeking our approval mm. i do remember the last time we went over the initial project uh teresa and i said is there a way that you can include if you're going to include figures try to be inclusive like someone in a wheelchair someone you know someone outside the box and the one that they presented that's just the model he has we're not gonna you know you can't pretend something you can't like but in the same way you don't want to force feed any part of the mural to anybody. So I think if we're like, and here's the East Lansing bit and here's it, you know, just 
the references and QR codes URLs is plenty. Having it I agree. over the top I agree. is just we planting and stuff. We went over this, so I thought that when we discussed um, the last meeting we had, I thought it was pretty important that we um, expanded his image more. Oh. And, it, and, and it was, and we were all satisfied with that. So, I mean, I think Dr. Green, as he's Lansing, I don't think you, um, I'm, I'm with Tata. Yeah, yeah I agree. Um, I have a slight hesitancy about where the QR code is going to be since this particular mural is so high up. Um, you know, is it, you know, it's what, like 40 feet off the ground or something like that? Um, so my concern is, are we having a QR code like down in the alley or are you going to have a nine foot by nine foot QR, QR code that's next to the mural that you can scan from the street? Um, and so I would like the mural to be able to stand on its own as much as possible um, for that reason, uh, just because a QR code could easily be lost or someone could tag over it super easily. Um, and then it's rendered useless. So um, anyway, I don't know if anyone else has thoughts about this, especially um, given the where this mural is located. That's my major concern about um, QR codes and things. Um, is that it's uh, it's not an it's not easy it's not as easy to place a QR code with it um, as it would be if it was on just street level at the side of the building. I think having QR codes, multiple QR codes in the general area, like the where you would be able to visually see this sort of you know, in, in its whole, not just like partially, but in the downtown area on a few different street corners would be a good solution to that. Uh, I don't think that there's any way to get around the possibility, aside from doing, like you said, like a nine foot by nine foot QR code on an elevated space to try and scan to, to avoid that. I see Teresa has her hand raised. Yeah, I, I wanted to answer that question and also have a separate question. Um, I think um, when I think about what art in general, like writ large, its purpose is, it's not always to answer questions, but to ask them or to uh, provoke wonder. Um, and it, it's, it tends to be more nebulous than it is um, answering or being so specific and all encompassing. And so, and I, and I think, um, to, to the question, for example, to Hannah about why the, why the tuna, or people ask me questions, well, why, why did you do this? There, there isn't always an answer to the why. Um, there's a lot of intuitive or um, artists follow impulses that we may not always have the answers to. And to then, I, I would be uncomfortable with going back to NWC and, and saying, you gotta put this, this, that, this reference you may lose some of the magic that the art has in its ability to, uh, in the artist's ability to one, engage and be, be engaged in it and, and the reason that people are compelled to make. And, and two, uh, then this um, cycle of like having an image provoke that wonder and curiosity to follow up. And it may not work with every single person, not every viewer um, may follow up, even if they see the QR code, uh, but they may see the name or they may make connections later, later on down. But I, I think it becomes um, potentially problematic to, to legislate, over-legislate artists um, and their intentions. So I would, would be personally comfortable with uh, the QR code, maybe located in several, several spots. Um, but to, to then go back to the artist who submitted this beautiful design um, and ask too much of it, um, I think you, we, we do two things simultaneously. Um, maybe make the, the artist more resistant um, uh, to, and not feel like their impulses, their artistic impulses are honored. 
and um, try to make art solve too many problems at once. And so that's, that's my response. Um, and the second question I have is I wonder, I, with respect to number one, it's hard for me to recall the entire thing. Is there any, if we have any images easily accessible so we could see what number one is addressing? Because I don't remember the bottom and what, what the transition is meant to address. So that's, that's all I have to add. I think, we, yeah, I was gonna say this, we could scroll down a little ways to show the, the bottom portion there. So what is it that the transition is meant to address that? I don't, is there a picture too with the real space that, cause I, I'm having some problems kind of conjuring what the transition refers to. Uh, yeah, there's not any in the real space to scale. I think, cause if you scroll back up, uh, Justin, so the bottom edge is kind of, it's organic. It doesn't cut straight off, but I think I think what was being suggested is that um, like the whole, I don't know, somehow if the, the whole background behind it was painted one color and then this was put on top of it, that that would look chunky um, and not really flow very well down the wall because there's already a mural down there. Um, but if the intention is to not paint anything behind the this mural, then potentially this is already taken care of with the organic edge. It's not like a straight cut off line. There's, I mean, the clouds and the, the kind of bottom of the circle there, so. Yeah. I was gonna say, when I'm looking at the the image that shows up, you know, the, those pictures, he doesn't necessarily include like a light gray backing to the building. It looks like it's pretty much the stock color that's on the building right now. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not personally too concerned about that aspect. Okay. My, my major concern is kind of over dictating to the artist what they should be painting. Um, and also in turn kind of losing a little bit of the fact that should be centered around Dr. Robert Green and not necessarily East Lansing. That's just my personal opinion on it. I think the way we should be approaching it is, is primarily focusing on him and not necessarily us. That's just me. I agree with Alan on the point number one that it looks like in his design, the building color of the building is, is the background. And so I don't think there's an issue with the organic edge. So do you have any other things besides making um, Dr. King and Loretta King uh, more defined that you wanted to update? I don't that and I know that was my suggestion. I don't know if others agree or not, but that would be because I know NWC did mention that as um, part of the ideas that they're there in the shadows, but didn't want them to overpower. I just from the image couldn't tell that they were there. So that would be my suggestion is to tweak it, like turn the volume up a tad bit so that their profiles are recognizable, but not overpowering. And that's that's the only suggestion that I have. Yeah, and I agree with you, Teresa, about that. I would, I'd like to, I would like the that red, red forms to be a little more concrete, um, instead of sort of possible weird red angel wings, I guess. But, um, but actually having a little bit more, um, a little bit more concrete form to them would be, I think, helpful. But. Um, Fine. I'm also fine with that idea. I think that's a good, good idea because it, it it isn't very clear what they are um, at all. And I think 
yeah, making it more concrete would be helpful, at least for the layman interpretation, for sure. But yeah, I don't think we have any, anything else that we really want to add on to this, unless somebody wants to raise their hand right now and prove me wrong. But I feel like we were we were pretty happy with the art piece in general. So you were asking if we could add, but we can't subtract, right? We can't say, like we said our piece that we don't think that we need to bring more East Lansing elements, but does that have any bearing on the art commission's list? Or did we just talk about that for no reason? I don't mean no reason, but you know what I mean? Like right. for our like, own- Heather, we can't, we can't reject what the art commission says, right? Right, okay, yeah. so that's no, just you, our you, comment you on it. Because I thought you said we might be able to. You guys have final say on the design. Oh. So the arts commission, they saw the things that they would have changed, but it's not its not really their call. It's your call. Oh, okay, then I, I would like to, can I move to scratch number two? Yeah, I mean, and we don't need a, a formal motion or anything either. Oh. Um, let me, let me uh, read back to you what I wrote so that I... Maybe this will help help a little bit. <laughs> okay, so for number one, it looks organic enough as long as the background isn't painted with like a straight edge. Uh, for number two, could this be solved through a QR code instead of changing the image? And I think that the answer to that is yes. Um, and then the location of the potential QR code is, is concerning, but that's something that I, I'll help and do BC figure out, we'll figure out together. So um, I don't think that you need to be worried that the Arts Commission is gonna hate you or something. Okay. If you say no thank you to that. And then number three, you said you liked number three. So I think you're good. I've got, I've got, um, could I ask to be excused? I have an electrician downstairs. Our fuse box went out in my house. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the lights on borrowed time. So um, <laughs> if it's possible for me to, to go talk with him and excuse from the meeting, <laughs> otherwise my house is going to go dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could tell us maybe you could quickly tell us which color you like most for the um the sculpture that's in storage i don't know if you saw that yet or not um i haven't okay well then in that case we'll i guess we'll pick it without you <laughs> we'll let you know which one we like i, I trust Tata and everyone else and yourself and Meg. um it, this just it just happened this morning so i called the electrician so I don't want to bother you with my problem, but that's hey, what's I'm, I'm just glad you got a contractor out today. Good for yeah, you, man. Like that's the real battle right now. Yeah. So I'm sorry. No, that's and okay. I will see you next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> okay. So I think, do we all agree that we don't like number two and are happy to scratch that one? I see nods. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Just making sure. Okay, so that's that's what we want, Heather. All right, that sounds good. I will um, type these up with my minutes and wait for council to approve our contract. <laughs> All right, uh, next item here, we have L5 and beyond. This was East Lansing's first piece of public art. It was placed in the parking lot off of Albert Avenue when Center City was built, it was disassembled. Uh, it's apparently in not great shape. It needs to be refurbished, um, which will take place here quite wonderfully. Uh, it has been proposed to be powder coated uh, and given a new color. It was originally a bright orange. It is now a pale blue. And we were given a sampling of the colors that are available to paint it with. And since I put the agenda together, uh, Jim Cunningham, who is the artist who will be refurbishing it, told me that you can, that rod isn't the only colors they have. They can do any color of the rainbow, any shade, anything. So sky's the limit. <laughs> you can, and they can even do more than one color too. And you know, I might be biased. 
um, for anyone who knows me. Um, but I would, I would probably like to see it return to its original color. Um, that is bright orange. Um, full disclosure, orange is my favorite color. So, um, <laughs> but um, if the artist's intention was for it to be bright orange, I would like to see it return to bright orange. Do we have a easily shareable photo of the work? Yeah, can you uh, share that from the agenda? I know we have that and a, a metal rod that has the different colors on it as the very first image uh, of the three that are listed there, I think. I agree with Meg on the color um, because of the intention, um, but I will fully disclose that orange is my least flavor. So <laughs> this is definitely, I do not win here, but it is about the artist's expression and the original intent is so important. If we ran out of that, then I even like the color it currently is, but it should be, the original expression should be kept intact as much as humanly possible is how I see it too. So. And it's only because I like really dark things. <laughs> but, it, it being orange will make it look really obvious. It not will. that, not that that wouldn't look obvious yeah. to begin with, but still, um, I, I also like the artist's intent. I think if, if you think about like a piece, just go with like furniture, people want to have like the original like appearance of the furniture. You know, people like the original everything. Not saying that renovating things or, or painting them is bad necessarily, but a lot of times what comes back to is, you know, people like the original state. I wanna see it in the original state because obviously I've, I don't think I've had the opportunity in my lifetime living here in East Lansing since 2008 to do so. And I agree, if that was the artist's intent was originally orange, um, I'm, I'm pro going orange personally. I second that. I, I Orange isn't my favorite color either, but I think for the reasons of it being primarily the artist's um, intent or original color, and I do think that contrasts with sky and surroundings would definitely draw more attention to it. Now, this doesn't, where, we don't have a place for that yet. Is that what part of today is for as well? So the Parks and Recreation Commission approved, I want to say two years ago, definitely pre-COVID, but pre-even talking about refurbishing, they approved it going in the White Hills Park. Um, if you're familiar with the park, if you're facing north, you're looking at a dog grooming place and um, then if you're facing east, you're facing the uh, quality dairy, and there's that big curve there on Lake Lansing. That intersection is going to be reconstructed oh. in the next year, and that'll be like a welcome to East Lansing Plaza. And the intention is for the this to be refurbished in time for it to be placed in that plaza. Okay. Well, uh, I also think the orange is going to stand out well against greenery, against the sky, and against snow. So I think it keeps it as a nice centerpiece as well. Um, just so that I'm um, covering my bases. Will it be elevated as it was in its previous location? Like on the concrete for pillars that we see here? Yes. So this it's currently placed on top of, I think, an electrical box that's covered by concrete. So it won't be raised up that high. But those white concrete pillars that are holding it up, Jim is actually working to reconstruct them because those just absolutely fell apart when the, um, the sculpture was removed. Mm -hmm. So before that happened, we, Wendy Longpre actually had the foresight to have specific measurements taken of each of them. And Jim has been able to reconstruct them. I think he's planning to reconstruct them from metal so it lasts a little bit longer. But um, yeah, they'll be up like that because we believe that that is a part of the sculpture. Okay, I just I wanted to make sure. A slight bit off topic, but I just had a mini revelation. I hope it's uh, worth something. 
uh, thinking about the QR uh, commentary? Well, we have now, um, as of a few years ago, signs around East Lansing, you know, with directions to here or there, and there's sound, signs in downtown Lansing that direct you to certain locations or landmark. Can, can there be um, similar type signage, not just for that work, but for all the public works in East Lansing that give their location, both physical kind of signage, um, and, but also on, on the website and things like that. And that might be something you would have in the proximity of the works, but they would also, I'm thinking about this one being, you know, in a, another location outside the city center, um, how somebody, as we start to, like Peter said, become more of the city of the arts, um, have a way that people could go out and search for the work. So um, that's just a peripherally related to this, but more directly to the last conversation. That's a good idea, Teresa. I wrote that down. Um, I know that the Arts Commission has talked about, we're not there yet because they've got a few other projects to finish first, but um, they've talked about trying to figure out signage for the public art fund specific art pieces, but also trying to get kind of like an art walk for all of the public art pieces that we have. So that's like, that falls right in line with that. Thank you. Do you need a motion about the color? I don't think I need a specific motion. I think I might've done a suggested one, but it's definitely not necessary. Okay. There's a consensus, so. Yeah, we all agree on the orange. Yep. All right, so the last item on the business portion of the agenda here is, I don't wanna say it's related necessarily. Um, this is the same gentleman, correct? Or did I imagine yes. that? Okay. Thank you, so uh, Mr. Cunningham also has a sculpture that he has produced uh, and he would like to donate to the city. Staff has identified Patriarch Park as a potential location for installation. And so what we're being asked today is if we will accept the donation of Choose a Sustainable Future Sculpture I believe your page is 37 and onward here. So when we were in uh, Mr. Cunningham's studio, I was trying to get a scale picture for you. So if you scroll down, I don't know if any of you have seen Wendy Longprey in person, but she's about five feet. <laughs> if that helps you at all with the scale. <laughs> um, and then actually, <laughs> other than the, the part where the wheels are attached, the whole thing is the foundation. Yes, um, is and then sure if you it. scroll down a little bit further, this is his sample one that he made. This one is only about yeah. three feet tall. And this kind of exemplifies the landscaping he has in mind, but you'll see how the foundation is covered and you can just see that triangle or that um, diamond there. And then if you scroll down even further, this is the proposed spot. It's not finalized. I think we'll, um, if you accept the donation and if Arts Commission is up for funding the foundation and landscaping situation, which we'll talk about on Thursday. Uh, we're going to meet with the artist on site at Patriarch Park. We think that this little dirt circle will be where it goes, but there's some other options as well. Um, part of the refurbishment of Patriarch Park right now is a solar park being put in, and Mr. Cunningham was really interested in having the sculpture over by that, but there's not a, a really good base for it right now. We'd have to do some building up and etc. So anyway, Patriarch Park is the location for sure. This is a potential spot at Patriarch. Can I ask a question about, um, I don't know how many of you all have taken children to Patriarch Park, but they climb over everything. <laughs> and so I'm wondering about how knowing that it will get climbed on, uh, just as the, how sharp the edges are, if it seems like it could, in that location, provide a safety hazard. 
Yeah, so that's actually something that Wendy and I are super concerned about as well. I expressed some, some concerns to her and with the qualifier that my dad is Mr. Safety. And so I grew up my whole life with like every safety thing required of me. And then Wendy was like, yeah, I have concerns as well. So if it is in this particular location, we're looking at a raised bed, which would potentially, I mean, it's not gonna completely exclude children from climbing on it, but it would potentially make it a little bit more um, cumbersome for them to get to it. If it's over by the solar park area, that's less likely that the kids would climb on it, but it would still need to be in some kind of raised bed situation. So yeah, we're working to, to figure out uh, children climbing mitigation strategies. <laughs> I think as a, as a parent of three children who have climbed on almost everything at Patriot Park that um, like you look at the fencing, they could climb that and fall. They could run into the street. Like we can't child proof the city, but if we have a sign, it'll be clear that this is not meant to be a toy. This is not meant to be climbed on. And that's pretty much all you can do and just cross your fingers, but they will find a way to hurt themselves. Yay kids. Uh, and as far as the art is concerned, I love the concept. And I don't know that I would ever say no to an art don donation. So maybe I'm just not a good person to ask that question to because it's never, the answer is never gonna be no, but the concept is great. And I think the audience that is gonna be around it at Patriarch Park is the perfect audience for it. So I grew up, there was a John Kearney in Chicago on my block, um, one of the gorillas of his um, steel bumpers. And it, it changes everything for a kid to be exposed to art. Um, organically like that. So if it's at the park, that's just the best. So I'm a vote, yes. I don't know if anyone else wants to discuss it further. The only thing I would say as far as like a child safety thing, I wasn't even necessarily thinking of it being sharp. I was looking at all the reflective bits because in a very bright sunny day, it's gonna be hot, but that means they won't touch it for very long. <laughs> so there is, there is a positive to that. But I also generally agree with you, like on a personal perspective. I know that probably general counsel for the city of East Lansing may have a different perspective on this. Um, but I, I don't like the idea of completely bubble wrapping everything in the city in the fear that a child might hurt themselves falling from it. Um, obviously, there, there are limitations to that. I am definitely for getting rid of arsenic ridden lumber that makes up uh, old playscapes. But Something like this, I, I don't know. There, there's a lot of statues. There's a lot of things that you can hurt yourself on around here. And this statue is not the first nor the last option. Um, and honestly, I'm more worried about uh, the, the, the items that are coming out of it. I assume that those are probably steel that has been painted. Um, I'm more worried about them getting bent under the weight of a child, depending on how thick that steel is than I am necessarily about children being hurt badly from a fall of roughly two feet. Um, so that's pretty much my, and I, I definitely have no inclination in saying no to free art, especially a large sculpture. Um, I definitely didn't mean to imply it should be bubble wrapped. Uh, no, no, I know that, but. Uh, it is, yeah. it is a liability. If you've got it somebody is. who sliced their hands open on a, a sharp piece, that's something to, to think about. Um, and obviously you can't um, protect every, everyone from everything, but for, for me, the idea of having it elevated, um, it seems to um, mitigate that. Um, and uh, I would be content with that solution. Yeah, maybe um, we have some degree of budget. Is that correct, Heather? Yes. Um, maybe we could look and see how much the cost would be for a concrete pedestal and trying to think here. Well, we're, so if we, um, if you accept it today, mm -hmm. what I'm asking the Arts Commission to fund on Thursday is a foundation that uh, has proper footings. We'll hire an engineer to get it all um, weighted properly, et cetera. Um, and then for also the landscaping to be a part of it. So whatever 
safety precautions we can take, we will take, but um, yeah. And there, there are two potential locations, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be Petrarch Park. There's also the solar park that we had discussed, which is right. well, obviously the, not the, as visible, but- At Patriarch Park. Okay. Yes. Because um, the Bircham Park, uh, Bircham Hill Solar Park actually already has one of Jim Cunningham's sculptures there. Okay. Um, so we wouldn't, and that's not city property to put something on. But um, yeah, that specific spot at Patriarch Park isn't finalized yet. It's just a potential option. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. The, the attractive nuisance issue is true everywhere, right? But I think like what you guys stated as solution satisfies the attractive nuisance problem. So like signage and elevation, that's great. So, right? And um, plants, you put plants around something, it's a little, it's beautiful and it's also a buffer. And then this mm -hmm. thing is like rising out of the foliage. It gets more movement that way. Sounds good to me. Put some roses in. <laughs> That'll keep the kids out. <laughs> Thorny roses. <laughs> So uh, I guess we have to move to approve that we're accepting the statue, right? Again, um, no formal oh. motion is necessary. Okay. Well, you geez. have consensus. So. Okay. Well, I all guess right. we have it consensus. Sounds like you have consensus. Yeah, we all <laughs> want it. Make a motion if you want. No, I'm I'm good. We can okay. save ourselves that. <laughs> uh, so last item here, I know that we're running kind of on the longer side. Um, so we did get that email that had come in from uh, Dustin Hunt. So if we can just post that up. Um, I did take some time to read it and I did think about it. Um, I don't know necessarily from the perspective of the art selection committee about uh, what we would necessarily do in terms of having a larger conversation, I think about public art in East Lansing. Um, I think we also all have our own opinions about what that is. Uh, and, and obviously I was a fan of, I, I like Dustin's hunt. I liked his proposal the most of the ones that we got. Uh, ultimately I went along with the group. Um, I guess any thoughts from anybody else about, I see Teresa has her hand up. Yeah, I just wanna say in general um, that I think if we start um, troubleshooting our process, then it could, in, in this public forum that our um, person we selected uh, for the um, proposal may have, we may have the unintended consequence of looking like we're second guessing that that person's um, uh, design was, not necessarily the number one or that we should have chosen somebody. I think it opens yeah. having this discussion makes me uncomfortable to, to be honest. Okay. Okay. So, um, if we're going to discuss it further, then I'm just going to bow out of the meeting um, because I don't think that that it should happen. We, we had a fair and open, transparent mm -hmm. discussion, which is very unusual. And I think we made um, the best decision possible recommending that the other artist designs were uh, if we could find a location to do so and um, artists uh, get rejected more often than not, myself included. Um, and we, we selected what we thought was the best design for, for our community. So, okay. um, and, and I, I will say just as a human being, I understand um, how it feels to have a worthy work um, not accepted. But um, to begin to second guess that process, I think is problematic, particularly for the winning proposal. I think that's fair. I don't necessarily want to give us the sensation that we're doing that either. Um, and, and really that's one of the reasons why I don't know that there's much discussion to have off of this item, but I did want to get everybody else's input as well. Um, Meg or Teta, anything you want to say? I thought Meg helped redirect the conversation to the actual assignment and the criteria in a way that offered clarity in the mm -hmm. face of tremendous talent. Yeah. And creativity. So I, that's there. It's on the table. There's, right. like, there's not much else 
uh, we can do. Now, going forward, there is a way to analyze the process without making it specific to the previous selection, but maybe take into consideration some um, different ideas that we need to add to the criteria or add to the discussion or the process. But we, we did what needed to be done. I mean, but I am yeah. very open to adjusting going forward. My huge thing, and it's not just because I went to law school, but you got to give people notice. And if you don't tell them ahead of time what the criteria is and what any hidden sort of impulses might be there, that's not fair. But then after the fact, you can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't, yeah. you can't do it in either direction. You have to give full notice and then change things going forward. But then that new process has to have the benefit of notice as well. My I, I, just, I really don't, I guess I don't know <laughs> what was wrong with the process or what was, what was I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't really feel like there was anything wrong with it either. Uh, to me, to me, the, the underwriting thing being said here is like, um, and maybe this is just how I'm interpreting it based on our conversation, but it's basically like, a, are they saying that East Lansing art needs to be too simple or something? or like my piece was too complex. Oh, okay. That's, that's the way I interpreted his statements based on the discussions that we've had then. Cause I know he was there in the background the whole time. So he was definitely there watching our, our deliberation. And I, but I agree, like, even though like at my, my first inclination was that he had my favorite piece. Ultimately I was swayed pretty heavily and I'm very happy with the one that we chose. Like what we have is going to be great. I, I really believe that. Meg, you were going to say something. I don't want to totally think of your time. No, my my feelings were if if our the space for our where this mural was going to go was a different location, then I then it could quite possibly be a different mural, mm -hmm. right? Like, but it was it for my, for me the process was we have this big space way up off the sidewalk, and. Um, we need a really clear image that you can see from, you know, a story or two stories down. Um, and so um, I'm not here to debate our process. No. I think <laughs> we um, fulfilled what we needed to do. Um, and I thought his mural was really, his mural design was really strong and I still would like to see it somewhere in the city, but not that space. Yeah, I think you made that exact argument and that that's what convinced me, <laughs> quite honestly. And it's, I still think it's the right one. Um, so yeah, I don't really, to me, it's not really a discussion from my perspective of, of something about our, the way that we did it. Because honestly, the way that we did things, we got really great submissions, terrific submissions. And we were very open. So, you know, to me, I don't know how much more we could have done on that end. Um, to, but, but my interpretation of what he said when, when I read it was less that this was specifically about the fact that um, maybe we were, you know, had a, a different view of like what East Lansing's art scene was um, than maybe what he interpreted. That was my in way that, that I interpreted what he said. And I could be wrong. Um, obviously, he's not here to, to say exactly what he meant, but... Um, I, I don't really see that there's much place for us to do either, to have a debate about in either location. It's, you know, we, we select items that are presented to us. Um, that's pretty much the extent of, of what we do. It's not necessarily to, to open a dialogue in East Lansing about what is or isn't art specific for East Lansing or like what the art scene here is supposed to be. I guess that's where I'm going with it. That's all I've got to say. I'm done otherwise. I guess I think it's important to, I did say something about how if we're making something accessible to people, it should be sort of what they're ready for. Mm -hmm. And that can be misinterpreted as like, we're not ready for this or something like that, but we are obviously, and we want it definitely. Let's just find a wall, man. Heather, you've made all these other miracles happen. Invent walls. I'm working on it. That was so yeah. great, by the way. Again, somebody <laughs> just mentioned it. Like the responses were 
Like we yeah. were Seattle or Miami, you know? What? Kudos <laughs> to you. And, and the next time, you know, it's gonna happen. But I mean, I have no problem examining our process. You can always improve, right? Yeah. But we did do it. We did it to it this last time. We, so. got, we got great stuff. Look, I'm not, to me, I, I don't really want to change anything about the process. I'll be honest. I, I don't think we could have done it more transparently or gotten better results. So uh, that's me. Um, but I did feel like I wanted to at least reference what was what this was, and at least what I thought what was being said as well. Jesse, did you have anything to add in? Um, I I was really pleased with the process. Um, I did actually call Dustin and have a little um, phone conversation with him just to follow up. Um, it does seem that his concern was more that we kind of um, defaulted to a more conservative choice, which I actually don't agree with. I think it really, to me, it really was more about the location. Um, but one of his suggestions was that we try to engage younger people on our panels, which I always think is a great idea. So, um, you know, I think perhaps when a vacancy comes up on this commission, perhaps maybe somebody from the MSU art programs who's an undergraduate or graduate younger person would be totally appropriate. Um, just in the sense that we want all of our um, commissions to be balanced and represent our community. So I think including students whenever possible is great. Um, but no, I was really pleased about the process and I'm actually really excited about the Dr. Green mural and the possibility of um, installing Dustin's mural somewhere else in town. So I think, you know, two, two great murals for the process of one is pretty much the best outcome we could have possibly hoped for. So yeah. all about it. I don't know if I'm gonna say something I regret. And so maybe I should just tune out, uh, but I, and I'm not opposed for younger uh, people being on the panel, but for the implication that the panel's too old um, <laughs> is quite upsetting. And I, I know it's hard to be rejected and especially when you can see the conversation unfold and you're in that final group. Um, but artists have to learn how to uh, take uh, what you get and move on. And had the RFP been different, maybe that would have been the winning design. And as I thought in that last round, all four uh, designs were uh, fully um, deserving of merit and it was a very difficult decision. But the, the discussion right now is making me uncomfortable both with the age of the panel and the implication that we're too conservative. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just very uncomfortable with where this is going right now. And I think that I should uh, say farewell and um, that I'm, I'm not opposed to, I, we don't have a, or I've never had a say in the RFPs. So whoever, whoever's designing those maybe wants to think about, you know, what the, the calls are for, but in the end, you can only pick one, if you can only pick one design, then, and you have 200 people applying, there's going to be 199 people with, um, that feel just a little bit sore. And I understand that because I have been on that end more times than not. So um, I think I am going to go and uh, I don't know if there's any other agenda items, but that, that's all I want to say. Oh, Thank that's you. it. That, that we're pretty much closed at this point. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead. Any, I think we're good. Everybody else. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move to close the meeting. And, uh, motion okay. to close the meeting. <laughs> all right. Well, you did. Her... Oh, second. Second. There you go. <laughs> it's all right. All in favor of closing the meeting. Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone showing up and we'll talk again in about a month's time. Okay.